Before we start this video, a large thank you to Kyle, Dean, Astrosen, Jamal the Monster, Israel, Sasha, Kijital Flex, Winters, and Neil for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello everybody, before we start today's topic, I had a few people comment and say the player flies to the floor when you load into a scene. So if I press play here and press start, and quickly switch to scene view, when we press start, we're actually spawning our players. So you can see they're hurtling into the oblivion. Basically, they're building up speeds. So when we load the game like this, we fly through the floor because we're falling faster than the scene is loading in. To fix this, right click, create a plane on the main menu, reset its position, and then click off the box for mesh renders so you can't see it. Now, when we press play and press start to spawn our character, they don't have that velocity build up. They're just kind of see resting on this invisible plane, which is perfect because we're going to use this too when we do our character creation menu. Now I start the game, load it. You can see I don't fly through the floor. So that is fixed. Now, what are we doing today? Well, we're making our character effects system. So let's start by going into the character base classes folder and create a new C sharp script called character effects manager. What do character effects do? Well, they process anything from taking damage, block damage, poison buildup, healing, basically everything that affects your character in the game will be processed here. So let's start by writing our namespace as is per tradition. And I am then going to delete start and update functionality. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually make some comments. So let's separate what we want in the three different categories. We're gonna have processing instant effects which will handle things like taking damage, uh, taking blocked damage, healing, all that stuff, things that happen instantly. And then we're going to have things that happen over time. Think of things like poison, uh, scarlet rot, any kinds of buildup like that, anything that gets degraded or increased over time, but depends on time as a factor. And lastly, we have static effects, which are just on your character and they are there until they are removed. Think of things like trinkets, things that buff your character when you equip a piece of armor or add an effect. Uh, they're not on a timer, but they're there statically until this object is removed or the effect is removed. So again, instant effects are processed once and then they're done and forgotten about. Timed effects are processed over time and static effects are on your character either permanently or until you remove them manually. So we can separate them into these three categories, but today we're gonna focus on this first category, instant effects. So let's make a public void and let's call this process instant effect or instant character effect, whatever you prefer. Now, what are we doing here? Well, we're gonna need something to process, something that holds data. So obviously we need to take in an effect and then obviously we process whatever the effect wants us to do. So we need to make a base class now for our effect. So let's go do that. Let's go to any scripts folder here and create a new folder and I'm gonna call this effects. Now you could, if you wanted to, put this into the character folder because it's technically character effects, but I'm going to keep it outside and give it its own folder because there's going to be a lot of effects in the future. So inside here now, I'm going to create a new c -sharp script and I'm going to call this instant character effect. And this will be our base class for all instant effects. So let's open that up and then let's delete the start and update functionality. And let's also drop in our namespace as is per tradition. And what are we going to write here first? Well, since we're doing multiplayer, it's good to give everything an identification tag if you want to send it over a network using a database. So let's make this a scriptable object first because that's what it's going to be. And let's create a header and call it effect ID. So every effect in the game will have its own ID. Let's make it, you can make it a string. I make mine an integer because I find that's just nicer. Um, personally, it's just what I like to do. I'll call it instant effect ID, make it public so we can reference it in the future if we need to. Now, that's not important right now, so don't worry about that. When it does become important, I will explain it, but I'm just gonna put it there because it will be used in the future. Let's make a public virtual void called process effect. Let's make it require a character, so a character manager, and let's write nothing in here. Now, any effect we do create is gonna override this and do its own thing. So let's make our first effect. What is the first effect gonna be? Well, we only have one thing we can affect right now, so just for educational purposes, and it will be important in the future, uh, let's make our take stamina damage effect. Now, basically, this is going to come into play in the future, um, but right now I'm using it as a demonstration also. We can still use it now, but it will, it will be used a lot more when we add things like taking block damage. But for now, it is an excellent way to showcase why this is important. So I'm gonna call this take stamina damage effect. I am going to drop my namespace, erase the start and update functionality and make this derive from the instant character effect class, which is a scriptable object. 
Okay, so what is a scriptable object, quickly if you don't know? Basically, you can create them in your game like assets and use them as if they were little objects. That's the best way to describe it. Um, I'm oversimplifying it, so if you're not familiar with them, you should take a look at what they are. They're super useful. So why do we do this? Why do we make a whole different effect for each little thing? Well, let's say you want to basically take stamina damage, right? Let's make a public flow for the stamina damage. Well, let's say you want to take a bunch of things into account, like maybe your character has modifiers that change your stamina damage. Maybe your character has modifiers that uh, alter how much incoming damage it takes. Maybe you want to play a sound effect or a particle effect or a visual effect graph every time you take stamina damage. Instead of calling those variables every single time, you can make it so you call taking stamina damage on this one effect and then every time you take stamina damage, it does all these things here. So let's make a private void for calculate stamina damage. And I can make a bunch of comments here just to showcase again. We can compare the stamina damage against other effects if we want to or modifiers. Let's say you have a ring that makes it so you take half the normal stamina damage. Well, we could check for that here. And basically this just keeps everything very neat and organized so that every time you want to change an effect, instead of changing across six different places, you only got to change it in the one place and that's where you actually have the effect logic. So if I was taking stamina damage across 15 different scripts, that would be very bad to edit. But now, since it's always going to be taking it from this one place, then it's very simple to edit. The same thing is true with health effects and poison buildup effects. You only have to change it or adjust it or make additions in one singular place. It's a lot neater. So under calculate stamina damage, let's make if character dot is owner. Let's check rather for the other owner. And if we are the owner, let's just subtract our current stamina value by the incoming stamina damage, because right now we got nothing else to compare it to. We don't have any modifiers or any cool things like that yet. So in process effect, let's just say calculate stamina damage and pass the character and let's save that. Now, that would be working as intended, but we need a way to put it into our game. So let's make a create asset menu here above the class. Let's say menu name is equal to, and let's say character effects slash instant effects, and then slash take stamina damage effect. Now, what does this do? This allows us to right click in our uh, project and create the scriptable object because this does derive from the scriptable object uh, of this name. So now we can do that. Let's save this, go into our project. Let's go to the data folder. Let's make a new folder inside the data folder. Now let's call this effects and then another folder inside effects for instant effects. And then finally, we can right click inside this folder and then you'll see a new menu called character effects right at the top when we go to create and then go to instant effects and there it is, take stamina damage. And there we go, there it is as a little scriptable object, so useful. Now we could just basically reference this scriptable object from another script or drag it into the inspector somewhere and use this. So what are we gonna do? Let's create a new empty game object and you probably guessed it. Let's make it named world character effects manager. And now we're going to make a world manager to house every single effect we ever create so we can access them with ease. So let's call this world character effects manager or whatever you want to call it really, as long as you know what it does and it's clear to you where it's going to be in your scene. Let's erase the start and update functionality, drop in our namespace as is per tradition. I wonder how many times I'm going to say that before the series is over. All right, so inside there, the first thing we want to do is make an awake method and set up our singleton. So public static world character effects manager instance. If you want to make a getter and setter, it's way more secure and I encourage you to do so. I'm not going to do that. And if you don't know how to make a getter and setter uh, and you want me to make one just to showcase it, just let me know and I can actually change every single uh, singleton we have to a getter and setter variant. So after that's done, let's go ahead and make a serializable field and let's make a list of static or sorry, instant character effects. Don't have static effects yet. Let's call these instant effects or instant character effects. Now, let's generate effect IDs so we don't have to do that manually because when we got 80 different character effects, we don't have to be manually writing in every single ID because that could become very erroneous very quickly if you accidentally give the multiple effects the same ID. So this is, uh, this is foolproof. So let's just say four, let's make a for loop and for i is equal to zero as long as i is less than instant character effects dot count i plus plus. And then we say instant effects and then we say i dot effect id is equal to i. And what does this do? It just goes down through every single effect in the list we have and assigns it a value. And as it goes down, the value changes. It'll go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 into infinity. Uh, and then call that an awake after you check 
just make sure the singleton isn't called. So now, in instant effects, let's add our only effect right now, uh, take standard damage effect, and there we go. Now when we press play, that will be assigned an integer value. So it's not important right now, but it's good to keep those in a database because in the future, it will be very important. And as you know, we're doing a lot of things in preparation for the future in this series. So it will make more sense later. But now, we need a way to actually test out our effects. So we made our character effects manager. But we want to put this on our player, so let's make our player effects manager and make that derive from character effects manager, just in case we want to have any special logic for our character, uh, but also because we should keep everything in the same convention and it's very neat. So from there, we'll make an actual little debug method to test an effect uh, instantly. So player effects manager, let's erase the start and update functionality, drop in our namespace as is per tradition. And then we're going to basically go to our character effects manager, change this from a public void to a public virtual void in case you want to override it. We probably won't do it, but just in case, if you want to add your own special logic to players only, there it is. And what are we doing here? Well, now we have effects. So let's make this require an instant character effect. Let's call this effect. And then we simply need to call upon our character. Now we don't have that yet. So let's make a variable for of type character manager. Let's call it an awake by saying character is equal to get component character manager because it sits in the same game object if you have it set up like me. Uh, so let's make that a protected virtual void also so we can override that if we so choose to do so. Uh, so character equals get component character manager. Cool. Now we simply say character or sorry effect dot process effect and pass the character and that's it. Everything else is handled from the effect. Very simple but very powerful. So let's go over to the player effects manager now. And now let's make a header for a debug delete later. And this is just for us to quickly test the facts we make, pop them in there and click a button in the inspector and we're good to go. This won't be in the final version of your game, most likely, unless you want to keep it there for whatever reason. So serializable field, instant character effects. We're going to call this effect to test. Okay. And let's make a serializable field for a bool. We'll say process the effect, initialize it at false. And now let's make an update function. We're going to say if process effect, process effect is equal to false. So we don't do it a billion times, once every frame or whatever. And then we're going to say inst instant character effect effect is equal to instantiate the effect to test. And then we say process instant effect and we pass our effect. Now, you're thinking probably, if you haven't used scriptables a lot before, why are you instantiating a copy of it, Sebastian? Well, I'll explain that momentarily. Now, why isn't this auto-filling? Oh, it's probably because I haven't derived it from my class. That's my bad. So yes, we are instantiating a copy of the original and we're processing that instead. Now, why am I doing this? Well, basically, if you change a value on the original scriptable object, if you ever use it again, it will have the same value that you set it to as previous. So let's say, for example, you have a take da health damage effect and you take health damage and change the health damage to 17. The next time you use that, it will be at 17 still. But if you make a copy of the original and use the copy instead of the original, you never have to edit the original, which is way safer and what you always want to do. So if I go to like take stamina damage now, for example, you can see here there's a stamina damage value of zero because we haven't set it up yet. Well, if I were to set that to 27 with code, then the next time I use this, it will be at 27. So we always want to use a copied version of the original, never the original in most cases. And I'll actually show you an example of this at the end. But for now, this is basically going to work as intended. It will instantiate a version of the effect we want to test and then process it. So we can actually test this right now. So let's go into the game here and change the stamina damage to say, ah, 25. That'll be very noticeable. Now let's go to our player prefab and add the player effects manager. We haven't done that yet. And then let's drag it up and position it wherever you want it to be positioned here and put mine at the bottom. Let's drop in our only instant effect. Now, if you press play, load into the game. And if I go to the player and click process effect, Boom, my stamina goes down. You can see that is working as intended. So you can do a lot of cool stuff with that. If you wanted to, you could play a visual effect. You could play a sound effect from this take effect script. Just reference the character dot sound effects manager and it will be working uh, as intended, which is really awesome, very powerful. So now let's change this to a take stamina damage effect and let's instantiate it and cast it as a take stamina damage effect because it's always going to be that. There's nothing else. And then we can say effect dot stamina damage is equal to say 55. All right, now let's save this. And you'll watch, since I'm instantiating it, it will not change the base effect. But now let's copy this code and paste it again, and let's comment this out. I'm going to make a quote or a comment here, and I'm going to say, when we instantiate it, the base effect or the original effect is not affected. 
But on this bottom example, we're not going to instantiate it. I'm going to say when we don't instantiate it, the base effect is changed. So I'm just going to show you again, we're going to change this value to 55. So we'll take 55 stamina damage, but the base effect will not change. Let's even go to the take stamina damage effect and make it debug.log. So it's very clear we're definitely taking 55 points of stamina damage. So under, under a process effect or calculate stamina damage, this would be a better place to do it. We can say debug.log character is taking, and we can say plus, we can add in stamina damage, and we can say plus again, open up some quotes, uh, and we'll say stamina damage. So this is just going to print how much stamina damage we are taking when this effect is processed. Let's save that. Now, if I go into the game here, you can see I, I, the value is definitely 25, right? So that's that's sure. If I, but if I process the effect, it takes 55 stamina damage. You can see the bar has taken a lot more than before. This is because we're setting the stamina damage after we instantiate a copy of the original, but we're not using the original. So let's do the opposite. Let's actually erase uh, or comment out, if you prefer, the part where we instantiate it. And let's instead just directly change the stamina damage uh, on the effect itself and then process it. So I'm actually just going to change, uh, we don't need to actually instantiate it so we can delete that variable. I'm gonna change instant character effect to take stamina damage effect because it's the only effect we have right now. That way I can just directly say effect to test and reference the stamina damage itself. So let's say effect to test dot stamina damage equals 55. And you can see we're not instantiating it. Let's process the effect to test. So we're directly now changing the, uh, the actual effect we had dropped in. So you can see the damage is definitely still 25. And I'm going to make sure this is still there. Yes, it is. Okay. So yeah, the damage is still 25 on that take stamina damage effect. But when we process it, it's going to change to 55. So let's load into the game here now. And let's go over to the player and process the effect. And it says you have taken 55 stamina damage. We go to the effect and there it is. You can see it is now 55. So you can see why this will be problematic in many circumstances. Uh, you don't ever want to change the original. You always want to instantiate the clone in most cases. So this is the bones to our character effect system though. As you can see, it is working as intended. Before we go, I'm going to go back here and change this to basically be more general. If you want to test more effects in the future, I'm just going to change it from take stamina damage effect to take instant effect. And I'm just going to instantiate it and then process the effect. But yeah, guys, in the next episode, we're going to make our health system, our health bar, and we're going to make it so we can actually take damage from things in the scene. We'll even make a little uh, hazard in the scene where if you run into it, you will take some health damage. And from there, we can go on to things like processing character death, resetting the scene when you die, et cetera, et cetera. But this is the most, right now at least, or I would argue one of the most important systems in the entire project because this is where you're going to do anything really that affects your character. Uh, so it's really cool. I'm very excited to show you more on it. So my friends, if you found this video helpful or you learned something, I would greatly appreciate a like and a comment. It does actually help out the series so much. I realize how much of a broken record I sound like, but it genuinely does. Thank you to all of you who take the time to do that, by the way. I, I sincerely appreciate you. And thank you so much to all of you guys for tuning in. It really does mean the most. And thank you also to my patrons. It is because of you lovely people I get to keep doing this at the rate that I am. So, guys, I'll see you next week in the next episode when we start our health system. Very excited for that. Uh, yeah, have a great weekend.